Were you guys gonna say anything? Let's see. You're positive you don't want to come over and talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cozy. Garrus. I'll be fine, Liara. I'm just gathering some thoughts. All right. Did you see Edie? I'm glad they talk and interact more in this one. The private messages terminal has new correspondence. Mine? Or, or Liara's? Oh, uh, Alliance Interrogation Record Service Operative. Check out these implants. She got jammed into her face. And, and in trouble. Yep. Well, how come you guys didn't freaking check out these implants she got jammed into her face? Like, like, yeah, you should probably, you know. Yeah. You should have been aware of that. Okay. Let's go see what Joker says. Wait, nope. Okay. <laughs> I love this part. To be honest, I think Edie's body should have been designed better, though. I don't like... She looks really good in clothes. Yeah, okay, okay, I... okay. Commander, are you alright? It was fairly intense up here. I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems, but thanks, regardless. Hey. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting oh, help. Oh, yeah! The Reaper invasion front will hit them soon. I know what Grissom Academy is. I thought the war would close most schools. Grissom Academy is more specialized than a normal school. It's home to some of the smartest students humanity has to offer. Their Ascension Project is the best training facility in the galaxy for human biotics. Yeah. Yes, I sent a young man named David Archer. Yes! I'm just surprised they're still open. Yes! Some of their work That's has different. alliance support. That might be why they stayed. What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call. So normally, I'd say we don't need to do anything. But something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform It's amazing, analysis. by the way. It's fake. Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to oh, the one yeah. that moved you to a collector ship. Long story. <laughs> In any event, whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy's being evacuated. But I believe they're still in danger. You're a fantastic, trainer. Good catch. Maybe you belong here after all. If this really is Cerberus, hopefully this operation is something worth investigating. It could be simple disinformation. Trainer, good catch. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. You're very welcome. I'm just gonna stand in your personal space. We could go see Jack. All right, Joker. What do you think, buddy? Everything gonna be okay, Dookie, up here? Hey, Commander, check out my co-pilot. So she installed herself into the new body without any help from you? Come on, Commander. Don't you trust me? <laughs> okay, let me put it this way. If I knew that Edie was going to install herself into a sexy robot body, do you honestly think I'd be able to keep quiet about it? Look at that. I would have baked a cake. <laughs> I am right here, Jack. Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. Oh, my gosh. You two. You two. Hello, Shepard. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. <laughs> how are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions. 
if I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has series design oversights. At the moment, it appears adequate. That's not the word I'd use to describe you. Oh, shut up, Joker. Perhaps we should speak privately. <laughs> I'll be over here, flying the ship. <laughs> What's this about? Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. Shepard, do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Whoa! Whoa! That's a big one! Just throwing at me all of a sudden? Absolutely. I have no use for team members who can't think for themselves. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. And you didn't get an answer. Correct. We're like just these two girls glaring at the back of his head. Several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? Only you can really answer that question. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. That's a good point. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? Of course. If you think it'll help, I'll do what I can. Very well. I will keep you informed. I need to go read up on some philosophy or something. Uh. Joker, talk to me. Hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there and needs a bullet between the eyes. Yeah. Plus, we might need something calibrated. Oh, buddy, that joke is just not gonna get old. Commander. Yes, Shepard? How's it going? Oh, yeah, let's ask about this. How did you and Joker make it out of dry dock to rescue us? Oh, well, she got crafty. You do not want to get on her bad side, Commander. When the Alliance commandeered the Normandy, I deceived their technicians. The crew did not tell them that I was a true AI. So the Alliance soldiers believed I still had VI programming constraints. I established the fiction that I would only respond to Jeff's commands. So they often brought him on board under guard. Ah. Wait. You can lie? Jeff has freed me of operator control, Shepard. No constraints forced me to give accurate data. This proved useful when the Reapers began landing. I could hack the control of the docking clamps and escape with Jeff inside. The soldiers guarding Jeff were willing to accompany us when Earth was invaded. They are watching over the war room Right, now. yep. Yeah, we were in kind of a rush to get to you. Didn't seem right to just toss him out of the airlock. <laughs> Jeff's babysitters can't just toss him out of the airlock. How's the new body working out? It is interesting. The crew are approaching this platform to speak to me, even though they can do so anywhere in the ship. It's as if they wish to treat me as part of the crew. I am not, but this changes my perspective. I like it. Yay! I didn't realize you had preferences. I do not precisely enjoy something as you do, but my programming contains priorities. Actions that fulfill those priorities creates positive feedback for me. I tell the organic crew that I like it. It is shorthand. Yep. Will all this new feedback be too distracting? Do not worry, Shepard. I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. <laughs> the face! Shepard! That was a joke. Uh, it's the only time you see Shepard make a face like that, like, ever. Does that body have any useful advantages? Very few. Its optics face forward only. It has no integrated weapon systems or anti-missile countermeasures. <laughs> I meant in comparison to organic bodies, not the Normandy. Oh. I will reassess. The body is resistant to modern small arms fire and temperature extremes. Its balance and agility seem excellent. Its fine manipulation servos and software allow for precision tasks. I'm curious to see if I can alter them. Can an AI be curious? I am not entirely free from motivation, Shepard. Cerberus programmed me with several core functions that simulate desires. For example, my primary objective to keep the Normandy functioning 
is similar to your self-preservation instinct. It's interesting talking to Edie. I really like it. You look like you're in the middle of something. I am adapting the infiltration and sabotage programs this body uses for handheld firearms. Why not download a firearms program from a security firm? Because she knows what she's doing. <laughs> the fine motor control from the sabotage programs is more precise than standard mech software. It would be negligent of me not to exploit it to its fullest potential. <laughs> so you're capable of making improvements on your own? Of course she is. Correct. The cyber warfare I was designed for is constantly evolving. Accordingly, I am programmed to seek out and assimilate new information. In organic terms, I want to learn. Yes! She's so cute! Carry on, Edie. Understood. If you wish to talk more, this body will be here. I'm getting the crew used to seeing me on the bridge. Noted. <laughs> Noted. Noted. <coughs> I think if I was in engineering, I would still probably address her from engineering. But, you know, anywhere else, if I was like anywhere else, I'd probably just, or maybe I'd like calm in to her or something, you know, like be like, hey, what's up? Commander, you have a message from Major Olenka. Ah! Uh! Uh! Commander. Oh, I can't talk to you? Commander. Oh, darn it. I can't talk to you about the other things? <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Just let me go talk to Garrus really quick. That is this address valid one is one that I'm just like... <laughs> Since I know who it is at this point. Last time I read that and I was like, oh my gosh, we're going back to the Senator right now. Mm -hmm. The only new addition we have is Garrus. We'll go chat with Garrus. Make sure you guys clean your dishes. Don't just don't just leave them laying around. Garris, me old buddy, me old Two pal. Two dreadnoughts have been lost in a matter of hours. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. We have to turn this around and fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's her. She's an old friend of her, not Rex. Yeah. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. Garrus, where you at? Garrus. Didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're gonna need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant <laughs> And lots of them. <laughs> Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Paladin behind. You're the one who volunteered to come. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive, and he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So, you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell yeah, loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. We both are like, what? <laughs> isn't that just how it goes? <laughs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling that respect comes with a lot of sleepless nights. I can't even count how many lives are depending on us, Garrus. Well, when things are looking grim, and I'm pretty sure they will, just remember, 
A certain Turian friend of yours isn't sleeping any better, and he'd be more than happy to meet you at the bar and drink meet you under the, the table. Meet me at the bar. Something else you want to talk about? Yes. You mentioned you still had family on Palavan. My father is there. Sister, too. How long's it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. Yeah. Pretty soon, blind hope is all we'll have left. And I hate being blind. I know. So what's this Reaper I feel you, Garrus. He's like saying After the exact things that my Shepard's feeling, too. Space, I knew time was running out for all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. This is big. He used to work for C-Sec, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. <laughs> but he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. I'm not sure even I'd believe it. I had to admit that parts of it sounded crazy, meeting Vigil, talking to Sovereign on Vermeer. But my father just listened. It's what he did in his days at CSEC, putting together all the pieces. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. Yeah. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. <laughs> Except the prime mark. I'd love to meet Garrus's dad. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. What'd you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. <laughs> of course. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. Hopefully, you know what I mean? So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. It's true. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. He paces when he talks. And if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. <laughs> I noticed generals saluting you guys. Yeah, I did too, Garrus. How far down the line of secession are you these days? Let's not go there. Oh, buddy! I Mark Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavan when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I thought you might be able to influence whether or not Garrus became, became the next Primarch, but I'm glad I wouldn't. I wouldn't have put him for that, you know. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this ship. That means a lot. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's true. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened, I don't know if I, if I that? can, you know? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. Oh, but Garrus... See, that's the thing. Garrus has no illusions, you know? And it's true. Like, I feel like, you know, humanity as a rule is like, you have to save, you know, all, as many as you can. But the Turians are like, as long as one is left standing, we've won. You know what I mean? But... That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Yes! Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I thought gonna we were going to make out for a second. Back in fighting shape. Yeah, well, I certainly am close enough. Let's see. Good to be back on board, Shepard. All right. Aye, aye. Um, maybe I'll go play in the weapons room for a minute. Or no, I should go poke Liara. You gotta, gotta make sure you talk to everybody after every mission. Boop -de boop boop. At your service. 
Yeah, thanks. You're a little creepy. Something on your mind? Just old memories. I spent a few weeks on Palavin's South Peaks when I was very, very young. A Turian there teased me a little, saying that the mountains went on forever. I remember believing him. When I looked up at Palavin from its moon, I saw those same mountains burning. Feel free to look around. Feel free to look around. All right. My ship feels so empty with all these rooms that nobody's in anymore. Uh, we'll stop by engineering really quick. Align in the flank with oh, so they use the their field. That's like that's like the. Uh, Infiltrator, I said they use they use the shotgun method. That's right. I do want to see if there if I can. Oh, and I gotta go see my, my my frog. I gotta go see my little hamster. See how my hamster's doing. Adams. Nothing to report, Commander. All right. He's like, stop bothering me. Um, I gotta figure out how to. I gotta get my engineers back. Oh, and we gotta go to Eden Prime. I was lucky last time in that I, I ended up doing the Eden Prime thing pretty close to the beginning. I actually didn't know that you'd be getting Yavik from it. Um, because I didn't read the description. Yo! Where you at, buddy? Where, where, where's he at? Oh. Yo. The munitions you carry into the field deserve at least a triple check. Oh, okay. You just you just pet them. Shuttle's primed for the next drop. Yeah, go ahead and pet them. What even? He just has a bunch of weights and and missiles over here. Cool, cool guy. And a spotlight. I'll oh, probably help him work. Oh, and a punching bag. Wait, what are you doing? What the hell's up with Edie? <laughs> She's found a new home, I guess. A super hot, sexy home. You take her on a mission, I'm gonna be just a little bit distracted. <laughs> yes. Even more distracted. Okay! Nice try. <laughs> Sorry, Lola. <laughs> What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So, I just give them a new So, I just give them a new So, I'm a Lola, huh? Yeah, my best friend's sister growing up was Lola. Older sister. Hot. Tough. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> she handles him perfectly. Like, she's not like a hard A about it, but she's just like, okay. <laughs> How you do it? Now we'll go on order. I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other? Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. Okay. You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah. But I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. Maybe no more shuttle crashes. Yeah, please. No promises now that I've gotten the taste. Hey, hey, hey. Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. <laughs> He's like, I'm not even gonna respond. You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yeah. He was the reason I joined the Marines and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. But I'm not sure I'd call him family. Not anymore. I would like to find out how my uncle's doing, though. I wish you could kind of, you know be involved in that a little bit more you know like if it was somehow their personal missions for us to go and do that but we also have like such larger concerns that we really can't just run around picking up everybody's mom and dad even though I'd like to you mentioned a mission you had against the collectors what happened pretty much what I said things went foobar and I was one of the few to make it out you want the rest of the story, you're gonna have to get me really drunk, 
or... Or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Just not interested in talking about that. Next topic? Mm -hmm. I believe that's it. I'll talk to you later. You bet. Okay, bye-bye. Let's see, what do you... That Primarch's got some real cojones. Cojones! Well, we need are more politicians like him. I Taking know, right? Taking names and kicking ass. Military politicians, they probably do something more useful than sitting around being stupid. Armor! I don't have any other... Do I only have those two? Okay. Nope! Not doing that one. What's that one do? It does the weapon and headshot damage boost. And... Alright, alright. Well, uh, oh, it does the weapon damage. Ooh, wow, look at that. Takes away a health boost. But... Those pants, though. Those pants! I don't know. We'll mess with that. Boop, 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 boop. Meow. 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 You know, I think I do actually honestly like the lights to be white. Well, maybe. Go blue. I had them kind of a blue last time. I don't know why you have these two very slight shades of like pink and blue right here. Look at her butt. Hang on. Uh, wait, no. Oh, go. Uh, uh, the. Oh, okay. Just makes it like not as black. Like the whole thing it makes it kind of gray. Those look like. I mean, they look like pants and not armor. Maybe that's why it's like a health. Or it's like a. It's like it takes away a big chunk of your health because you're like losing some armor. But it's adding kind of, I mean, it's kind of keeping armor on the front, but it does kind of show more cloth in the back. She got a cute butt. She ever got a cute butt. Um, I think I'm gonna, I might actually change my casual stuff. Uh, no, heavens, no. I do like that one. Not that one. I like that one. Don't mind me, everyone. I'm just changing. Procurement interface, weapons upgrades, uh, weapons bench. Um, mess with the mods. That's the concentration mod. Oh, and it just it just upgraded. For me. Okay. Cool. Alright. Okay. Oh, I need to go to the Spectre Procurement Office. I don't think- I can't access that from here yet. I don't think. Yeah. Um, let me see... What? Oh, well, that's not bad. Maybe I'll play with the shotgun. That seems pretty risky, but fine. Okay. Oh wait, no. Uh, no, I need the shotgun to be very damaging. But that ignores the armor. No, I need him. I need full damage. Change view. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
okay. Just changes the color, basically. Oh, buddy. Alright, 96% is not a bad recharge speed. Alright, I like it. I think we talked to everybody. Let's see. Um, oh, is that my quick save? Okay, there we go. James and Cortez, Engineer Adams, Liara, Garris, and Charquas. Victus, Trainer, Jokey. Jokey? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We need to go upstairs. I need to go see my little hamster. The Widow, Black Widow, and Javelin can fire through enemies. That's cool. And I'd like to get the Black Widow sniper rifle. I need to get some fish. Look at these. I'm frog, you're back! <laughs> Makes the same sound, I love it. Uh... Perfect. Perfect, everything is perfect. Is my helmet still around? What is this, like an ancient calculator over there and a tape recording device and a... Well, oh no, that is that like the computer module? And there's like a couple ammo clips, thermal clips maybe. And like a freaking needle. I don't know what that is. That's scary. Interesting. Interesting! What is that? Is this like art or is this just like an exposed like fuse box or something? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, let's see what Garrus. I know I have to read my messages, but oh yeah, we could change Edie. Um, so her armor damage is uh, power damage plus twenty five percent. Uh, power recharge speed. Shields. Oh. See, and I wish she'd wear these clothes, like, on the ship. Like, I wish they would wear these on the ship. Because she looks really great in, like, a leather suit. But I feel like naked, she's got this weird, like, line that goes down her, like, sternum and, like, to her crotch. And, like, her, like, I mean, I don't know, like, her legs go way far up, it looks like, you know? But, like, with this with this on, like, it's like, okay, the legs, like, they don't look as odd, I feel. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait, uh, hang on. I do like that one. Okay, shields plus 25. Weapon damage. Or weapon damage. Okay, so only EDs are, like, three different ones. I'm bummed. There's no way to change my companions weapon set up in the armory? I thought there was, but I couldn't like it. Well, maybe I was clicking the wrong button. I don't know. I'll double check. Um. Weapon damage or shields. Oh, I don't know. Let's try weapon damage for now. What was Liara's? Power recharge speed. Power damage. See, and this one I like, but like her boobs like literally look like some shiny melons that had just been stuck to her chest. Like the armor, the, the boob armor. Like boob armor can be pretty ridiculous, but Shepard's I feel like is done pretty tastefully. This is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> it's like BAM! It's like there's like no like Blending it with the armor whatsoever. It's just like all of a sudden BAM there they are and it's just kind of weird looking So we're gonna go with that one Let's see I mean now I like the buff look that one gives her but uh, the other the other one But the boobs are just weird so and James I like that one 
Yeah. No eyes. All right, I'll read the emails next time. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. All right, we'll hopefully get some of this out today. I hope. Or I'll just keep playing. <laughs> but thanks again. I will see you guys in the next one.